Welcome back everybody. We are Mike and Jesse from Square One Farms. Uh, we are in the middle of a series about how to start a homestead on basically a shoestring budget. This will be uh, video two, uh, how we became debt free. pretty much we we didn't want to start with a lot of bills this is probably the hardest step maybe probably it takes a lot a lot of uh, preparation and it's not going to happen overnight um, and not only did we want to I, in, understand that we're very happy that we did because this has actually ended up being probably the most expensive thing we've ever even tried to do um, correct it's it, when you're fencing and, and all that stuff is just so expensive so um, so let's let's jump back into it on on how we how we started that okay um, like I said like we said in the first video uh, we don't want to assume what you have going on so we will only tell you what we did to get where we're at so with that in mind know that whenever we started becoming debt-free we had two incomes. Uh, we only have one now because Mike has been... I quit six years ago, so six and a half years yeah. ago. So six and a half years ago, Mike quit his job and we've only relied on my income. So, and I won't say that we weren't making good money at the time, but that was actually one of our biggest issues. We, um, we had another one of those conversations we talked about in part one. Uh, and we put pen and paper to the amount of money we were making versus the amount of money we actually had. And we are in no worse shape with one income than we were with two. So, so weird, isn't it? <laughs> we've got half as much money, but... I would say better. We're, we're in we're better shape. I think we're in better shape as well. So because we had the conversation and we looked at where our money was actually going uh, and it was going into some pretty wild places we had a hot tub yeah. <laughs> don't do that uh, we had four wheelers we had brand new vehicles um, we had a huge mortgage mm -hmm. anyway it was it was just a lot um, and we we just spent our money on stupid stuff too. Yeah, we blew a lot of money because we were making a lot. We were making plenty of money, so we were blowing most of it because I mean, uh, and that didn't that didn't help us. I mean, we were we were just throwing money away, and it didn't further us. I mean, we weren't investing anything in anything. We were just you know having fun. Yeah, just we got the money when we spent it. That is correct, and we had way more bills than we really wanted and or needed so that being said after we realized how much money we were basically blowing and uh after we realized we did not want to live the life that we were living anymore uh we decided to um buckle down pretty much um and from that point on we slowly know that whenever you become debt free it does not happen overnight it is not easy so just keep that in mind that uh, we have been actually planning, we have been planning for this day for years and it didn't just happen for us. It's a very slow process uh, to get where we wanted to be. So we started out uh, fairly simple with, um, we had already talked about it and we knew that Mike would probably be the one to quit his job so we knew that at that point it was his check that would be gone not mine so we started trying to get to where we could live off of just my check alone so we ended up very slowly taking mike's paycheck and dwindling it down into a savings account at the credit union 
So he was just slowly, and after a month or two, he would add more until we got to the point that most of his check was going into a savings account. Um, By the time I quit, uh, $200 a month is all that was going into our, our uh, checking account to pay bills or whatever. The rest, I almost almost everything was going into savings. And, and so, tip, push yourself. Push, push, push. I mean, can you cut? Can you start with with fifty dollars a paycheck? Can you start with a hundred dollars a paycheck? Can you can you start with something, and then push your limits? Always push harder, push harder every month. Just do a little more, a little more, a little more until it took right out a year for us to get to the point where we were spending and pretty much blowing my entire paycheck. To a, a year later, to where we. We basically did not need my paycheck. It was just going all straight into savings. And it's, and it's a constant push. You're always pushing another $50, another $100, another $200. Just push and uh, that's that's just, so that's that's tip number one. You know, uh, push, push your finances as hard as you can uh, without getting into trouble. Uh, but right. Well, and the money that was left over from what Mike, uh, that was actually still going into our account, that could right. actually, I know he's slobbering on me, but uh, that would have covered our daycare expenses because both of our kids were in daycare because we were both working. So the money that we were using of his check would have covered our daycare expenses. So we knew that once he quit his job, that would be gone because the kids would no longer need daycare. Um, also a very big thing, big things that we did, um, we had credit card debt whenever we first got married. We were young. Uh, if you've ever been in the military, enlisted. We weren't officers or anything. We were we were the poor enlisted group of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, you don't make very much money, so you end up, you know, doing young stupid things. Yeah, you start credit cards and you. I mean, you know, in in defense, you still have to start your family. You still have to buy a couch. You still have to buy a bed, and you know, you gotta you gotta start. So, I mean, uh, especially if you're in the military, you don't make enough money to just go pay cash for all that stuff. So, uh, you gotta start somewhere, and that's what we did. And, and, and that's where we ended up. <laughs> that's where we ended up. So, um, what we started doing when we wanted to clear out our debt, um, we decided what we needed and what we didn't need. Wants versus needs is probably the biggest thing that you will always question every time you swipe your card. Uh, do I want it or do I need it? You know, um, and that becomes especially important when you're homesteading because you have to do it, you have to decide once you're homesteading, do I want the four-wheeler or the side-by-side -side or do I need the four-wheeler or side-by-side. -side. Yeah, it would make it easier, but do I need it? I mean, could I put that $15,000 into, Something you know, else. a new tractor that would be, like, way more beneficial? Wants versus needs. You're always going to be questioning wants versus needs. It's it's probably the most important question um, of starting a debt-free life. That is, I, I, I yeah, think. I think so, too. Um, whenever we were living in town, we had internet, we had cable, we had uh, cell phones through a big provider. We also had a home phone. And like I said, two truck payments or a truck and a car payment and a house payment. Netflix, we were paying for Netflix as well. Um, so we cut out the cable. That was the first thing that we cut out immediately. Because it was cable. like a hundred bucks or something like that a month. It was ridiculous. and. You know, everybody's so, everybody's been down that road with Dish or whatever, and and you don't watch half the channels, and it's just not worth it. So we were one of the first people to cut the cord. Isn't that what that is it? correct. We cut the cord off of the uh, cable because there was nothing to watch anyway. So what we did at that point, we had a hundred bucks that we were spending on cable. Take that hundred dollars and pay that much more on something else. Put it on the principal of your home or uh, something. The principal of your credit card debt. I mean, it's this is how it goes. Whenever you cut one thing that you just want, you can then pay off, start paying off what is left. What most people do is they take that extra hundred dollars they just saved and now they just blow it on something else or they go open a new line of credit. That's not you don't that's not how you get that free. You you're still at you're still at ground zero. 
you know you want to you want to gain and in order to gain you have to pay off the things that you owe so every dollar you you save you need to be putting back into something that you owe right or even even if you're not if you can handle your bills even maybe just save it i don't know we chose the route to pay off everything that we were indebted to so that was this is the route that we took um we cut out our cell phones which I say cut out cell phones, you can see maybe my cell phone in my back pocket. What we did, we had two phones, uh, two cell phones, and it was like 200 bucks a month. Uh, now we pay um, $80. Uh, actually, we, we now have three cell phones. Our oldest daughter is on ours. We have three cell phones for less than $100 uh, because we went to an independent you know, cell phone company. We did not go through your big, big cell phone providers like we were. And keep in mind, I want to caveat real quick on all of this. Everything that we're talking about right now, we are not financial advisors, and everything's going to be mm -mm. completely on you. I don't, I don't want you to think that we're telling you how to do it. We are telling you what we did and how we got to to where we're at. So just, just a little caveat to to this whole conversation because this can get a little tricky. Um, and I don't want anybody like mad, like, well, you know, Mike did this and I can't do that and blah, blah, blah. Just know that we're not financial advisors. We're just, we ended up debt free and this is how we got there. That is correct. All right. So, and it was, it was like that with everything. We ended up shutting off our home phone. Uh, we changed our cell phone providers. Uh, we shut off our cable. So yeah, uh, I think Jesse, our camera cut out. Sorry for that. Uh, Jesse was talking about set off, shut off of our uh, cell phone provider, uh, and uh, we we switched. That was a mosquito. Oh man. <laughs> uh, we switched uh, over to different plans, uh, and once again, that that income tax return, we don't we didn't take it and uh, blow it. And blow it we paid something off in wants versus needs uh, I, I may want a new iPhone but I don't need it I'm still rocking an iPhone 5 with a completely cracked screen I mean I, I don't until it dies I don't need it same with my truck I've been driving the same truck for 17 years now I don't need a new truck it's fine and that's that want versus need thing and that's that's the defining point of whether or not you're going to be debt free is if you're going to be disciplined enough to to stick to that whole want versus need thing. Uh, and like his truck, we uh, we were living in town uh, in the process of deciding the prepping thing, the homesteading thing, when his truck was actually paid off. Won't lie in the least bit, we bought it when we were at Hill. In Utah, yeah. And with bad credit, and y'all think 17 years ago, and the truck payment was $550. A lot uh, for 17 what, years ago. Yeah, which is now it's not a bit. That's not a much pretty common. Now, but uh, back then that was a huge, huge truck payment. Uh, our credit was pretty much non-existent at that point. So the and interest rate. It. Yeah. That's stupid. <laughs> I thought you leased the first one. I leased them both. I thought we bought the, this one. We financed this one. It doesn't matter really how we done it. <clears throat> But whenever that truck was finally, finally paid off, I mean, we were sitting on an extra $550 a month. So, in it goes. We have to figure, actually, the $550 a month was still whenever we were spending mm -hmm. like wildfire. Yeah, we, fire. we were just like, yay, more So money. we had more money, so we started blowing that. And then once we started realizing what we were doing, where did the $550 go, you know? Our bills haven't changed. We're sitting on the same thing. So, you know, back to that. We had an extra $550 a month that we could not account for. These are the little things that, that add up that you don't even realize you're doing it. We did it, and we did it for years. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's almost like we were forcing ourselves to be poor. I don't, if that's a thing. Yeah. Um, so, with that being said just it, it takes a lot of discipline and we have fallen off the wagon a time or two mm -hmm. and sure. bought ridiculous things 
Um, I really want a new uh, camera for YouTube. Um, that thing is, is old as dirt, yeah, but it's still working. So want versus need. I really want a new camera, but you know, we'll just wait. Well, when it dies, I guess. Right. So, I mean, we're, we're, we really, y'all, we really are trying to practice what we preach here. We don't want later down the road for somebody to be able to say, well, y'all said this, but that's not what y'all do. We, in this life, we really try to live and do we don't want to i mean what's the point of telling you how to do something that we won't even do ourselves my truck is 12 years old mike's truck is 17 years old uh 17 years old we just had to buy our oldest daughter her first car it's older than she is the car is a 99 model it's the oldest vehicle we have yeah. but it's the lowest mileage yeah 100 i mean we paid a thousand dollars for a 1999 Honda Civic with 130,000 miles on it. And if you know anything about cars, and I don't, but I know that's I know, that's, that's a good a deal. car. That's a good car for a great deal and a thousand bucks. And she's she's rocking and rolling every day. So. Right. So this is it. It take it just it takes so much. And once again, it's worth it. It really is worth it. Uh, our all of our vehicles work <laughs> so far yeah uh, and I it's just, it's cheaper it, you know and that's the other thing I mean something happened to my truck 17 17 years I've been driving it if something happens to it it's cheaper to replace the engine than it is to go buy another truck right. and what once again wants versus needs I mean how bad do I want a new Toyota Tundra <sighs> I want one bad. I'm not going to get one. I'm, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> no. I'm not going to. They're, they're as much as a house now. And it's just silly. Yeah. It's just silly. So, anyway, man, we're getting off topic. Debt yeah. free. Debt, debt free. free. Debt free. Debt free. It Make takes, those decisions. Yeah. It takes time. All right. So, I know we're kind of all over the place. Let, let's do a little recap on what it is that, that we find most important uh, in order to be debt free. And I think, first of all, is understanding your wants versus needs that's uh pro because that that happens every single purchase and it's a it's a planned event everything is all about wants versus needs uh secondly you want to pay off all of your just get get all the credit cards and all those high interest things out of the way and so that you can move on and, and start making big steps and those big steps are putting more doubling down on your principal on your house and pushing yourself as hard as you can to put as much money possible into savings uh, because I push yourself hard I mean the worst case is that you you get in trouble and you have to dip into your savings but understand that that's not an out that savings should be like the holy grail you don't touch it you just it's savings and you just keep piling up you get 10 15 20 thousand dollars and then you can turn around and do whatever it is that you that you want but double down on your savings double down on your on your principal pay off all your all your cards wants versus needs i think those are the the top things that we need to get away from this video correct i think yeah anything want, you want to add no wants versus needs is a is i think is the biggest thing do i want it or do i need it and if you need if you think you need it go ahead and try to justify it because i think i need a lot of things uh we won't go into that we'll hit that on the livestock video uh, be, you know, the wants and needs are a big thing. Once you decide you need something, try to justify why you need it. You know, work through it. Uh, if Mike and I, we always start out the new year or whenever we have a little bit of extra money, we always, always decide together what we want to do with it. And then we wait. Nine times out of ten, we talk ourselves out of it. Guarantee it. Yeah, and if, if you're one of those people that is really impulsive, let me make a suggestion to you. If you want, let's say, a motorcycle, or you want a kayak, or you want something, anything like that that's extra, just do the envelope trick. Put, put $20 a week or whatever into an envelope and just and write on that envelope kayak or motorcycle or whatever and put some money whatever a little bit of extra money you have in that envelope i can almost guarantee you 
I can almost guarantee you by the time you have enough money in that envelope to buy what it is that you're wanting, you're not going to want it anymore. And now you're going to have $5,000 or whatever sitting extra in an envelope. I promise you, if you will do the envelope trick, guaranteed, it's a great way to save money and not spend money on ultimately silly stuff. That That's 100% true. Uh, we always, 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 when a big purchase comes up, we always talk about it. We always think it's a great idea starting out a week later after we've talked about it, after we've mulled the pros and cons. For that whole week, the pros outweigh the cons until the decision comes. And then we're like, I don't think that's such a good idea. We could do this instead. Prime example. Don't start. Don't, <laughs> don't buy, don't he's, buy a he's horse. He's part of the livestock video too, hush. <laughs> Don't get a horse. Shut up. He was free. I don't free. even know if he can see. He was free. He was free. He's a retired, uh, our, our oldest daughter's uh, barrel racing horse. And he is retired and just living here now. But uh, free. if you, <laughs> that's one of those you can put in an envelope. And I guarantee you, you'll talk yourself out of You don't need a horse. <laughs> anyway, y'all. That's it. Wants versus needs. That's my main thing to take away from this. Want versus need. Allow yourself at least minimum a week to think about any purchase before you do it. I bet you'll talk yourself out of it. That's it, y'all. Until the next video, I'm Mike, and this is Jesse. We're Square One Farms, and we'll see you. Mm -hmm.